So how would you treat Overlap ILD? Here's the case. A 39-year-old Latin female comes to see me in March of this year. She has a month of polyarthritis with swollen knees and swollen fingers, mainly the PIPs. That's all she's got. No labs, nothing else, nothing to suspect. She does have puffy fingers and she does complain of rainouts. So I'm a little concerned. Is this RA? Is this, you know, the early manifestations of scleroderma? Um, so I give her prednisone, 40 milligrams, uh, and tell her to wean it um, in 10 days down to 20 and then down to 10. And I want to see her back. I order labs. The labs come back with a positive ANA, 1 to 320, and a nuclear speckled and cytoplasmic pattern. She has a normal CPK, uh, a normal sed rate and CRP, and a negative rheumatoid factor and negative CCP. Hmm. Well, I don't hear from the patient when she's supposed to come back. Turns out six weeks later, she goes to the hospital with severe shortness of breath. She's hospitalized, um, worked up, sent home, comes back in again for the same symptoms. This time she gets a pulmonary consult and a lung biopsy. And she's found to have um, interstitial lung disease with organizing pneumonia. Lab tests done at that time showed, again, that she was ANA positive, 1 to 320. She had a positive SSA and SSB antibody, and she was JO1 positive. That's all the testing they did. Okay, um, she did have um, a malar rash or malar depigmentation. She did have some complaints of uh, stomach complaints, gastritis, and whatnot during that hospitalization for severe shortness of breath, and it was really severe. They almost had to intubate her. Her joints were a minor complaint, so they gave her high doses of steroids. They gave her IV steroids. Don't know what dose. Sent her home on sixty milligrams a day with mycophenolate, 1,000 milligrams BID. I saw her a month later. She was already improving. And I had to get all this information from the hospital and from the, the outside uh, pulmonologist and saw that she was doing good. However, her joints were horrible. While her lungs were okay, she was still somewhat short of breath, still some cough. She was walking around and able to climb a flight of stairs, but she had like 30 tender joints and a dozen swollen joints. So uh, at the time she was taking prednisone 10 milligrams a day. So the question is, what do you do? Is it mycophenolate and prednisone? Does she need more than that? What kind of condition does she have with an ANA and a JO1, an SSA and SSB? She has no Sjogren symptoms at all of dry eyes and dry mouth. And so I double her steroids. I put her on leflunamide, and then I ordered uh, an IL-6 inhibitor, thinking that long-term, I'm going to be managing arthritis as the big problem. That was a presenting problem back in March, and this lung disease problem. And which drug am I going to do best with? Mycophenolate is not going to cut it for me, right? Why am I using leflunamide, you say? Well, let me give you the follow-up, and then I'll tell you my rationale. She came back on leflunamide. The prednisone was weaned down to 5 milligrams a day. She's on 20 milligrams a day of leflunamide. She is still taking the mycophenolate 2 grams a day, and she started four weeks ago on the IL-6 inhibitor, and it's doing great. No swollen joints. She's got tender joints. Um, she has no lung symptoms. She's exercising and walking two miles uh, a day, three days a week. So my plan is to manage her with leflunamide and IL-6 and then remove one or the other. Get her off the steroids, stop the mycophenolate. We stopped the mycophenolate at this visit. So what would you have done? You know, I asked this question on Twitter and you can see um, in the top left-hand corner of this video, uh, the poll done on Twitter recently, where I got 457 of you, no, 474 of our colleagues, and to answer the question, how would you treat antisynthetase overlap with myositis, polysynovitis, 
and rapid ILD. The patient's already on steroids. The options were mycophenolate, methotrexate, leflunamide, and IL-6. Um, and you know the answer. 62% chose mycophenolate. And that's actually in, in keeping with the ACR chest guidelines. Um, 27% wanted an IL-6 inhibitor. That's also in keeping with the guidelines. Uh, only 9.5% wanted methotrexate and only 1.5% uh, was leflunamide. And I wasn't one of the ones voting. Otherwise, it might have been 2%. So, again, here's what the ACR says. And, and you know the ACR guidelines done with, along with the CHESS Society. They came out with guidelines which were, again, all expert opinion. None of it was, you know, class A evidence. So conditional recommendations. But first line, patients with autoimmune disease and ILD, they recommend mycophenolate, rituximab, cytoxan, cyclophosphamide, or azathioprine if you have a rheumatic disease. And if you have either MCTD or scleroderma-like disease, they do recommend tocilizumab, an IL-6 inhibitor, as your choice. They are also in there saying that if the patient has a rheumatic disease, not scleroderma-like disease like this patient had, that they said that first-line therapy should not be a TNF inhibitor, leflunamide, methotrexate, or abatacid, mainly because those are drugs that are not known to treat ILD. This is the guidelines on ILD, not the management of the whole patient and the overlap story, right? But that's what we're left with here. So I've been using uh, methotrexate for many years to treat patients with myositis um, and arthritis uh, and done very, very well with methotrexate, but I've actually done even better with leflunamide. And there is some evidence out there, is not, certainly is not good evidence, no good studies about methotrexate and its use in patients with myositis. Um, why do I say this patient has myositis? Well, on one of her follow-up visits when she had 30 tender joints and a dozen swollen joints, her CPK was 2,000. Her AST and ALT were three times the upper limit of normal. And she was having myalgias. So again, let me recap this for you. The patient has severe polyarthritis and chronic polyarthritis. She has severe on, acute rapid onset of ILD that responds to steroids and mycophenolate. She has other symptoms like some rashes and depigmentation and rainouts and periungual erythema. She has gastritis and myalgia and itching uh, and tinnitus are her other review of systems kind of things, right? She's responded well arthritis-wise to steroids and leflunamide and IL-6. So again, I've been substituting leflunamide with great success um, instead of methotrexate in myositis patients. I have not used methotrexate nor leflunamide to manage ILD, and I wouldn't, right? I'm using it for the arthritis because it's safe, it's cheap, it's easy, I can manage it really well, and I don't have to deal with the craziness that goes on between rheumatologists and pulmonologists and whether you should use methotrexate in the setting of ILD, right? You know the story. They're going to say, no, methotrexate is contraindicated. Methotrexate causes an acute hypersensitivity pneumonitis. It does not cause ILD. Methotrexate has been shown in several different ways to not worsen or cause ILD. But yet, every pulmonologist I've ever met wants to get into a death match, you know, a knife fight over this issue, and they know that they're right, and they're not. So, um, leflunamide, no one's going to argue with, mainly because they don't use it, right? Uh, they don't have any warnings about it. Um, there are, just like there is some evidence out there about ILD being caused by TNF inhibitors, by methotrexate, by um, uh, leflunamide, it's goofy research because these are RA patients or whoever who are getting ILD or autoimmune patients who are getting ILD as a part of their disease, not because of the treatments we're using to treat the disease, right? So tell me that I'm wrong when you see me. Um, and I know she's already doing well. Uh, I have her off of steroids. She's on IL-6 and I just stopped her mycophenolate. So ask me next time you see me and whether you would, how would you treat this? Put your notes, your comments in, uh, in the space below and let's see what our colleagues think. 
again, overlap syndrome, antisynthetase. Again, I don't have a lot of money here. This is a patient in a charity clinic. I can't do extensive autoantibody testing um, and whatnot. You know, what if she had MDA5 antibodies? What are my other treatment options? You know, the other, other things in the literature that would be supportive as far as a treatment option, besides the ones that I said, would also be the use of JAK inhibitors, um, IVIG. I did say azathi azathioprine. I would, I, I would consider all of those if I needed to, but I don't need to because leflinamide and the IL-6 is going to work well until I take away the IL-6 inhibitor. What do you think? 